I am an ancien. I think we are in a position to study AC circuits. The most simple form of AC circuit is resistive circuit. We connect an ohmic resistance. For example, in our day-to-day -day life, it may be an electric iron or electric heater. There is a pure resistive circuit. Let us connect such a resistance to an AC source. This is a symbol of AC. Uh, it may be a, a plug in our home circuit. We are connecting these two leads to the AC. The applied AC voltage is represented by the equation V equals V0 sin omega T where omega stands for angular frequency or 2 pi into frequency of the AC. We will discuss frequency, cycle, etc. etc. after a few postings. Omega T is called the phase of the AC. R is the resistance. V, v is a variable because as T changes, value of V will also change. At each, at every instant, V has a V has a certain definite value. So V is V goes on changing. V is called the instantaneous value of the applied voltage. That is always represented by a small letter V. V0 is the peak voltage or maximum voltage available in the circuit from the source. We call it as peak voltage or voltage amplitude or maximum voltage etc. Now you can apply Ohm's law here. Being ohmic resistance, there is nothing special in this circuit. There is no self-induction. There is no charging and discharging, etc., etc. It simply draws current from the source. Offers ohmic resistance. That's all. So, you can apply Ohm's law here. Applied voltage is V0 sin omega t. So phase of the applied voltage is omega t. Current through the resistance R is given by I equals V by R. That is V0 sin omega t by R. V0 by R is the maximum voltage divided by resistance. Definitely that should represent the maximum current in the resistance let it be i0 then i equals i0 sin omega t so phase of current is omega t phase of the applied voltage is also omega t that means the voltage and current are in the same phase in the same phase you choose these two words in this in this same phase. You can write it in short form as in phase. In phase means when voltage is zero, current is also zero. As voltage increases to maximum, current also increases to maximum simultaneously. As voltage decreases to zero, current also decreases to zero. Uh, when voltage becomes maximum negative value, current also reaches the maximum negative value and so on. So current follows exactly the pattern of current simultaneously. Peak values or maximum values of current and voltage reach simultaneously. That is why we say that the current and voltage are in the same phase or resistance is called an in-phase component in AC circuits. It has the, uh, certainly it has a disadvantage because in-phase components will always consume maximum electrical power. We will see it later. So 
current and voltage are in phase in pure resistance. There is nothing special in it in this circuit. This is a simple form of AC circuit. Now we pass on to capacitive circuit. Suppose you connect this capacitor to a battery. This is an AC source. Suppose we connect this capacitor to a DC source, a battery. What happens? Battery will supply positive charge to one plate and negative charge to the other plate. And when the battery, when the capacitor picks up full charge, the flow of charge will cease, will stop. Up to that point, there is a definite amount of current which is of increasing strength. That is growth of current. That is called a charging current. That is a transient current existing for a short duration. Well, the voltage of the capacitor becomes equal to the voltage EMF of the battery conduction, the current ceases to flow and current in the circuit becomes zero and the capacitor becomes fully charged. There is nothing else to happen. The capacitor is fully charged. Then it conducts no more current because the core of the capacitor is basically and a, a dielectric which is a special form of insulator. But what happens when you connect the capacitor to a, an AC source? AC is fluctuating voltage. Its magnitude and direction change periodically so that in the beginning charge in the capacitor is zero. So charge begins to flow. Suppose this plate becomes positively charged and this plate becomes negatively charged. During this time, there is initially voltage across the capacitor is zero because of the absence of charge on the plates. To, in order to charge the plate, the source uh, supplies charge and in the connection lead there is a flow of electrons just to charge or just to deliver electric charge to the capacitor. So there is electric current in the beginning but voltage across the capacitor is zero because of the absence of charge. The capacitor gets a potential or voltage or potential difference when its plates acquire electric charge. In order to acquire electric charge, the source must supply charge or there must be a flow of charge in the circuit. Flow of charge is nothing but current. So what is the inference? Current leads on voltage. Current is set up before setting up the voltage. That is why we say that current leads on voltage across the capacitor. So current is the, at first voltage across the capacitor is zero. At that time current in the circuit is not zero. So current is always generated first. Only after that, a voltage is developed across the capacitor. That is why we say that current in a capacitor leads on voltage. We will see it mathematically. Say, you know that capacitor C equals Q by B. Big 3 in electrostatics. E equals F by Q. Potential V equals W by Q, capacitance V equals Q by V. These are the big three in electrostatics. So charge in the capacitor supplied by the source is Q equals CV. When Q is initially Q is zero, so potential of the capacitor is also zero. 
only after supplying the charge capacitor gets a potential difference so current is the first entity established in this circuit now uh, this is v is v0 sin omega t so q equals c into v0 sin omega t we know that current strength i equals dq by dt that is c v0 that's a constant into differential of sin omega t is omega into cos omega t that is i equals this c v0 omega we can write it as v0 divided by 1 by omega c into cos omega t can be written as sin omega t plus pi by 2 or 90 degree sin 90 plus theta is cos theta or i equals v0 by this 1 by omega c comes in the place of resistance in a resistive circuit. We denote it by the letter Xc. So V0 by Xz into sin omega t plus pi by 2 or 90 degree. That is I equals, we put it as I0, the maximum current. I0 into sin omega t plus pi by 2. Where I0 equals V0 by Xc and xc is 1 by omega c we call it xc as capacitive reactance and it is expressed in ohm because it comes in the place of resistance in the resistive circuit v0 by r instead of v0 by r we get here v0 by 1 by omega c so capacitive reactance is the resistance or opposition offered by a capacitor against flow of alternating current. Now, what about the phase? Phase of the applied voltage is omega t. Phase of the current is omega t plus 90 or pi by 2. That means current is ahead of applied voltage by a phase angle pi by 2 radian or 90 degree that is why we say that current leads on voltage i have explained it qualitatively so in a capacitor current leads on voltage or voltage lags behind LAGS lags behind current by 90 degree or pi by 2. Pi by 2 means T by 4 where T is the period of the AC. We will see what is period etc etc. So there is a time difference between voltage and current. Current reaches its maximum value earlier than voltage. Voltage acquires its maximum value t by 4 seconds after the reaching of maximum current. That is it. Moreover, we have seen that dv by dt, rate of change of potential difference causes a current called a displacement current. Here, since AC is applied, since AC is applied, voltage across the capacitor plates goes on changing. AC is changing voltage, so voltage across the capacitor goes on changing. That is, there is a definite value for dy by dt. This changing electric voltage or change Consequently, the magnetic field also will change. There is a definite dE by dt in rate of change of electric field intensity. This results in conduction. So a capacitor conducts electricity, AC, alternating current. But it will block direct current. That is the property of capacitor.
it always conducts alternating current and conduction is because of the changing voltage appearing between the plates of the capacitor we will see the graphical analysis etc etc after studying all the circuits in some more detail thank you